Introducing the Hydro Cup. Welcome back, guys. Today's video is about the lowly net cup. Well, we're not going to talk about net cups. They're readily plentiful on Amazon and eBay and places like that. And this is what I started out with. But I'm going to try to explain to you why I moved over to making my own cups. This is the one I've been using for the last three years. And it works well. And I'm going to show you the characteristics of this in action. But I'm also going to show you my newly designed Hydro Cup that I'm very proud of. I think this is going to make hydroponics much easier. Let me explain this in more detail in the next few video clips. Let's start out talking about Type 1 Hydro Cups. This is the cup I've been using the last couple of years, and you can see it's just well designed. That's the one that screws in so well to those little holes. They've got that inner lip there, right there. See with my finger there? And that prevents these sponges, these uh, not sponges, these pool noodles, from slipping through. It just kind of grabs them. It's almost like they've got these sharp arms that just prevent it from sliding out. So once you wedge that in there, you put your seedling right in the middle there, and it'll grow and expand, and the roots will fill the whole chamber sometimes, all the way to the bottom. And th that is just big enough for a tomato, a zucchini, or some other large plant, as well as just lettuce. Sometimes, though, it does crack it. It gets so big, it pushes it and cracks it, which is fine. Like I said, it's okay if you lose a, a net cap and get, you know, dozens of tomatoes off a plant, right? Um, I have some of these in gray, some of them in yellow, but this is PLA+, plus, a little stronger than the regular PLA, I believe. Um, I had tried to use coffee uh, containers here, but they were a little bit too small on the bottom, and I don't like that I have to cut out the bottom. And it does work, but uh, the taper's not as good, and they don't screw in at all. Remember, I said you have to have a very steep angle from the lip down into the hole if you want to screw it in. Now, technically, this is not a net cup, right? There's no net, no little holes in it to let the roots come through. I don't like those kind of cups. I've tried them. The roots get stuck in them. Very difficult to get out. You have to cut it all apart. Many times you just have to cut the cup to get the roots out at the end of the season. These are so much better. The problem is when you lift them up, of course, you risk losing your net cups. Now, that's why I love these little net cups. My first design, you can screw them in and they're not going anywhere. I love that. Now these are tiny little holes, of course, just to fit these net cups. So what I did, just to show you how complicated this can be, I've been playing around with other net cups and you see here, Oh, I thought I'd just reprint this and make a little different version. Well, look at this. It doesn't hold. It just doesn't hold. So the angle on the original neck cup here, the angle is much more 90 degrees like straight down and it goes right down into that hole and, and it sticks. See how that doesn't really want to come out? It almost lifts the lid up. I mean, that's pretty, pretty, pretty good. So that's not coming out. So that would be, if you're going to just grow lettuce, this will be one of the better neck cups. And uh, I would not recommend go too wide with the angle got to keep it the taper very minimal almost straight down so I found some other v1 like designs I thought I would improve on it but I didn't none of these worked as well as v1 you can see the angles here are not quite as straight down as v1 so I think that's the key is you got to get the angle just right here and if you make a little bigger hole these nut cups have served me well I can just drop them in now they, they have this little rim on top that prevents them from going right through even these little cups are versatile, but why not make a bigger cup so bigger plants can have just a little more room? So that was my next endeavor was to try to make a V2 similar to V1. Just a little bigger though to fit in these one and a quarter inch holes. The thing I didn't like about those smaller cups, this is that, here's the one for the squat that has not broken through, but you can see that it, it's loose. It's loose there. You can see, and even when it's all the way down, and when I Look inside, if I lift the lid up too much, whoa, there it goes. It wants to try to fall out. So because these holes that I drilled were one and a fourth, I thought, oh, I can make a combi cup. One for the small holes at the bottom. They can kind of screw in halfway down. And then one for the larger holes at the top. And those do work. But the negative with those kind of holes are they don't grab, which I really like them to grab. So all you got to do is print a little bigger net cup. And now, just like the little ones, and the smaller holes, those little bit bigger ones, grab real nice. Like that, you know. I think what I want to do with this one is even make that slope a little more strong, or a little more extreme, more like 87 degrees perhaps, or 85 degrees. I mean, it does hold a little better. It'd be nice if it go down just a little deeper. So that's a prototype. I'm gonna keep working on it, but it's a lot better than this combi curve shape that I thought would would work and it's better than these real loose ones these smaller cups that really don't do much in terms of grabbing the other idea is to put some outer external threads on there so when you turn it it kind of twists down and doesn't come out 
because I just want to be able to lift the lid up and not worry about it going south on me with the plant and all. Okay, before we move on to type three, let's talk a little bit more about type two hydrocups. And here's a stack of V2s that I had I had uh, played with. This is the first one, again, very similar to V1. Just bigger, so it fit in that hole. Let's go take a look. Let's just put this in. It's pretty good, but it's not going to hold as quite as good, right? Well, here's that original V2. I think that's about as, you know, still not, not quite as, still not quite as grabby as V1 was in those smaller holes. Here's another V2. Again, I made this too thin, kind of cracked up there, but it doesn't grab, does it? Kind of disappointing. So put those to the side. Let's find uh, V2C. Ha! Here we are. Ooh, now that one grabs good. So what I must have done on this one is I still got that sharp lip on top, but I tried to focus on I tried to focus on making the angle a little steeper. And you can see it grabs a little better. But still not good enough. Here's V2D. Put that one in. Now look at that. That's going down a little steeper. It's grabbing much better. Still not great though. Not as good as these original ones in the smaller holes, right? The V1s in the smaller holes. Let's see what this is. This is an E version E. It's kind of grabbing. I mean, I could live with that. And here's a 2F. It just keeps getting better. That sticks a lot better. Oops. And it has a, oops. And it has a ridge that's not so sharp. Let's go try it in the, instead of the totes in the bins. Let's see here. Here we are at the, the uh, trash bin. And again, that, that holds pretty good, but you know, I mean, it's pretty good. Not quite as good as I'd want. I think I can improve it. So my improvement was thinking, what can we do to really hold that in so it doesn't, you know, when you lift the plant up, you don't want your plant to go south with gravity. All right, now onto the finale, type three hydro cups. So that leads us into something that was a little more challenging for me. I had to figure out how to keep them in with external threads. So I had to learn how to CAD external threads onto a net cup because I haven't seen this at all anywhere. I did a Google image search. I did a patent, Google patent search. I did a, I looked on eBay and Amazon. I didn't see anyone doing this. Seems like a crazy idea, but why not just put threads on the outside of a cup and see if that will be able to screw down into those holes enough that when you lift the lids up, it can't go anywhere, it's screwed in. And so, you know, there's different ways to make threads, but the top half should be flat. So it marries up with the underside of the lid. And that's kind of what we did here. So we've got all sorts of different versions testing out. This version works good. It's kind of thick though. And again, I like the flexibility. Some of the earlier versions totally failed. I tried to print them. You know, a lot of this depends on your printer and what settings you put on the printer. It still works. It's just to see that rough nature of those threads, not real good for a print. Here's a, a version six, much, much better, smoother, cleaner. And uh, version eight, kind of rough there, but version nine, I realize the threads don't need to be so thick. They still grab, even if they're fairly thin there. Anyway, let's go see how these work. Let's grab one of these version nine since they have almost no thread on them. Let's see, here's one. And uh, we'll compare that to maybe a version. What is this, version six? That has definitely a thicker thread on it. and see if there's any difference. Okay, back to our bin. If you get it in correctly. That's pretty good, huh? go deeper but that ain't going anywhere so now let's take one of these with the thinner threads it goes in almost a little smoother there's not as much bulk if you really want you could pull it out you could just squeeze it it's flexible and you could pull it out I, I bet no I'm not able to right now but if I go back a turn see see how I popped it right there but generally depending on how tight you want it you can you can go as tight as you want just throw your little sponge in there let's see here you go all right, for those of you who like to grow big plants, let's test these threaded type three hydro cups in these larger bins. Okay, this one fits nice. So you just gotta get it down. You gotta clear that first thread, remember? So let's find that first thread, there it is. You see, as long as it's in there like that, can you see that? You gotta clear that first thread. Once you get that first thread in, then you just turn clockwise. You just rotate it as much as you want. The farther you go, and if you get a good seal there, the stronger it's gonna hold. That's pretty good. I, I don't think that's going anywhere. Let's see. South? It ain't going out. That thing's, that thing's screwed in. So I don't think it's coming out. Let's see here. Turn me up and just pull. See, that's, that's just not going anywhere. So that's V8. Okay, that's a nice thick thread on there. Let's try. Got all sorts of varieties here to try. 
Let's try a, a different one. Here's V6. Again, they're almost all very similar, right? Remember how these are formed. They've got the, the thread, instead of being a 45 degree angle, it's coming up from the bottom at 45 degrees and then going across to join up to the cup on top at 90 degrees or zero degrees, whichever way you look at it. So you've got a flat lip on top. I did fill it off the ends here so it wouldn't be sharp on your fingers. Okay, let's put this in. Oh yeah, it's good. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Let's see. It's not going to go south. So they're all pretty similar. Just one of those version nines that have the very, very tiny threads on the outside. Let's see if that works. It should be less bulky to get in. Again, the thread starts pretty low on the cup. That really goes in like butter. Very easy. You gotta almost grab the end here and pull. I mean, my goodness. That's what I was saying. You don't have to have real, real thick threads. Version 9 might be the way to go. I might make a version 10 that's just a tiny bit bigger than this, but this is a very good design. Very, very good design. So, so anyway, guys, at least you can see here, these cups work great in these bigger bins. Just make sure you drill a one and a quarter inch hole here and you're golden. I've got a video on that in the playlist if you want to see how to grow big plants, one in each of these bins and how I set those up. Okay, guys, I just measured the plastic and it's about three to four millimeters thick, just kind of like this, these boxes here. So we can see that the threaded nut cups that we're talking about in these bins are going to be one and a fourth inches. They fit in just great. Okay. But if you want to use the smaller net cups for lettuce, the ones we've been talking about for our 27 gallon totes, you're going to want to use a one inch hole or a 15 16th inch hole. The seven eighth hole just is a little too small for those kind of cups. And I'll eventually put these on eBay or Amazon for those of you who don't have a 3D printer or don't want to take the time to print them out yourself. I think you'll be very happy with these cups. And of course, make sure you get yourself some old pool noodles. We don't need such giant ones now that we're not using those big cups anymore. So one of these, uh, one of these pool noodles, you can just chop them up in multiple pieces and stick them in your net cups. So here we are back to our V1, our version one, or a type one net cup that's made for lettuce and other greens. And remember, we got these little holes here. And you can see the seven eighths drill. It's just a little too small. It doesn't quite fit in there, does it? However, the five sixteenths, that's what I was typically using in my bins. Fits nice. And it holds, look at that, it holds real easy, you know? So I would say go with five sixteenths or more, maybe more common even as a one inch hole. It goes down a little deeper, but it still holds real nice. These are almost identical, right? We're just talking about one sixteenth inch difference. And they both give a good grab there into that hole. So this is what I'd use for the bins. And when you start out, you know, with these bins, you've got little seedlings in here to start with, right? Look how many holes you can get on one of these bin lids, these 27 gallon totes. I mean, we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 little seedlings. And then you, you thin them out or space them out as they grow and die, or you use them up. As they get bigger, they have more room to grow in these bins. But like I said, if you want to go big with these kind of bins, one plant each, grow huge plants, I'd move up to the one and a quarter inch net cups. Time to pull these nice threaded one and a quarter inch net cups out. They're gonna fit nicely in this one and a quarter inch hole here. You just gotta go clockwise, remember. Engage that bottom thread. So even though I prefer using the smaller net cups for the, the lettuce, it's nice to have the ability to convert these bins into containers for larger plants as well, as I had a whole line of tomato plants along this fence here this past summer, and they did great. And so these will screw into these bin lids as well. In the middle of the summer, you can convert them over to larger plants. And if you've already got the seedlings going in these, in these bins, you'll have a lot of backups ready to go. And uh, you can get rid of the lettuce and push on with tomatoes, zucchini, squash, watermelon, you name it. So these are probably more functional, more versatile. If you're gonna go ahead and drill holes in your lids and you know you don't just wanna grow lettuce or other greens, smaller greens, go ahead and make your holes a little bigger at one and a quarter inch and use these cups. But whatever you do, stay away from these kind of holes. You'll ruin your lids. Now you're stuck with them. You gotta figure a way to close them off or tape them. Waterproof tape. Or you gotta make an adapter like this, which you could get back to your one and a half inch hole, right? But what a hassle. Now you're printing an extra piece of hardware just because you drilled the wrong size holes to start with. Now a lot of people have a drill bit set like this. It can be used. I've used this a couple times, especially with the big holes. But honestly, if you just want to get it done quick, I'd recommend these over the, the other type of drill bit. I put it in reverse and do it slowly so you don't rip up your plastic. It's easy as that, guys. So I printed a few more of these off in white. I think white might reflect the sun and they might not get as hot. Therefore, they might last a little longer in the UV light of the summer. I think the thinner threads 
might be better than real bulky thick ones just because you can screw it in better they still hold and uh, you still got that lip I might make this lip just a little bigger that's it for today watch out for part two and if you're interested check out the Etsy store I might have a few of these for sale if you want to test them out I'd love feedback thanks so much for watching you take care and have a great day